May I proudly put on the record my register of interest as a former teacher and a former trade union member and representative for the NASUWT. Mr Deputy Speaker, I am very worried about seeing teachers going on strike because it's the pupils that will suffer the most, particularly disadvantaged pupils from areas like Stoke-on-Trent North, Keepsgrave and Talk. And whilst I am a huge admirer of incredible work teachers do, they are sadly being cajoled by barren bosses in unions like the Not Education Union, led by Bolshevik Balsen and Commie Courtney, with their Labour mates to force teachers out of the classroom and make sure that kids continue to suffer. What can we do to make sure pupils will not be victims any further? Minister. Well, minimum, minimum levels uh, of service, of education and elsewhere will of course help. But again, I do just want to stress to the, to the House we are not legislating in order to necessarily want to or wish to introduce legislation in all these areas. That will be a matter for the House on secondary legislation. It will be a matter for further consultations. I very much hope that it does, though, uh, give the, uh, the unions and uh, some of their supporters in this House uh, the opportunity to stop and think about whether minimum safety is appropriate in their particular areas. And when it comes to teaching, I very much hope that they hold back from the threshold of strikes, which will be damaging to them and to the pupils. Last week I met Daniel Jobs, who runs the wardrobe kitchen, bar and restaurant in the city. He didn't open last week because he said it was no point because of the rail strike. Before Christmas he lost tens of thousands of pounds because of the rail strike, because people were just cancelling because they couldn't come in to central London. UK Hospitality calculates that around a billion pounds of business was lost in central London because of the rail strikes. Does my right honourable friend agree with me that it, yes it is right to protect the right to strike? But there must be legislation in place to protect other sectors like hospitality, protect businesses and protect from job losses. Minister. My well, honourable friend makes an excellent point. And actually, it, it brings me on to an important consideration, which is the disparity uh, at the moment between uh, these, uh, the, the public sector settlements on offer and actually the average in the private sector uh, at the moment, which has typically been uh, lower. Uh, and so it is right that as a responsible government, you have to balance off all of these different considerations across the economy. And for those running small businesses, tea rooms, pubs, uh, the, uh, the, the services um, sector, it is right that we consider them in this balance, which is why minimum service levels, as well as minimum safety levels, are absolutely right for this economy. Now then, I think it's important to remember that public sector workers are employed, for, employed by and paid for by the great British taxpayer. And whilst I sympathise with some of their demands, does my right honourable friend agree with me that their first loyalty should be to the British taxpayer and not some power crazed union barons who fund the Labour Party and have in the past paid off M Labour MPs mortgages? Yeah. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, actually, I, I want to pay tribute to um, particularly uh, those in the NHS. There's a very good reason why over a million people in the NHS received a pay rise last year when the country was uh, having a zero. Uh, pay rise because of COVID in the public sector, uh, and they did get a pay rise. The, the pay rise proposed at the moment uh, is worth about £1,400 uh, per individual. I appreciate that in these times and with Putin's evil war uh, and the impact that's had on inflation, everyone would like more money uh, as a pay rise, but a government's got to consider what that would do to people's taxes, what it would do to interest rates, what it would do to mortgage rates, and how we'd get into a circle, or we'd get into a circle where we're never able to get inflation down. And they, inflation is the biggest evil of all. We are taking sensible steps to address it. That lot over there simply want to roll over and not address the difficult problem. Well, my right honourable friend uh, agree with me that when unions such as the RMT reduce their customary referendum period from 14 to 6 days to force through a false ballot result to strike and then go to strike straight away against necessarily the wishes of uh, all members, would he agree with me that, that this is a, an important piece, uh, an important statement to make, an important piece of legislation, and will he confirm how promptly he will bring forward this bill to the House? Minister. Well, the House of the Bill itself is being introduced um, today. I, I, my honourable friend is absolutely right about, the, uh, about this. Uh, one of the things that we saw with the 
RMT is that they haven't put the offers to their members, and I think that's a real problem. As I mentioned before, the TSSA had put an almost identical offer, it was accepted by the members, and the strike was uh, therefore over. So I think any attempt to not allow members to see the full uh, range, the full view of what is being offered uh, is wrong, and because members haven't seen the full offer, they'll be unaware uh, of the various different elements of that uh, offer uh, because it hasn't been formally put to, uh, to their members. That is something that the unions can change immediately and I very much hope that they do. Uh, last week, rail users in Guildford tried to get in and out of the constituency, including key workers, um, were completely cut off. There were zero trains. At no point has the opposition condemned widespread strike action that disrupts the public. Will my right honourable friend agree with me and join with me in asking the opposition to back these measures that we are putting forward to keep the public safe but to keep our economy going and growing. Yeah. Well, friends, absolutely, absolutely right. If you look at whose side uh, we are on, we're on people who are working hard, who are uh, trying to get on with their lives and livelihoods, whose lives uh, who are concerned about their lives uh, when it comes to uh, emergency um, services. If you look across the benches here, who are they interested in? They haven't once condemned these strikes. Not once have I heard them condemn these strikes. They've been inflicting people's lives now, month after month after month. Not a word from this side opposite. And when we try to bring in even the most moderate and considerate legislation, which simply says that we will ask for a minimum safety level, what do they do? They object to it and again attack their own constituents in the process. Coming back through Heathrow recently, I was speaking to someone who works there, and they were praising the armed forces during the coverage of the border force and saying what an incredible job they did and how the whole process worked without any problems at all, and what a sad reflection it was on the public service in this particular area that they couldn't do the same thing. Does my right honourable friend agree with me that the other side and the unions and many who work in the public service have seemed to have forgotten that we spent four hundred billion pounds safeguarding their jobs, their futures and their careers? Yeah. So stay. Well, Mr. Speaker, I do want to pay tribute to uh, the, the Army, who did, who did fantastic uh, work. Uh, the Army, of course, do have no strike clause already, along with the uh, police. It will, once this primary power has been taken, be up for Secretary of State, including the Home Secretary, uh, to determine and consult in other areas for secondary powers uh, to bring in uh, minimum service levels. Um, but, uh, you know, actually, I think most people in the public service, working in the public service, are doing a hugely valuable job. They're trying to uh, do the best. I think many of them are frustrated by their radical union leaders, leading them often up a garden path. Will my right honourable friend try and impress on the members opposite, who keep referring to this as an anti-union measure, that public support will be endangered for the unions if they do not preserve minimum services for people whose lives are at risk. So, Mr. But, Mr. Speaker, my, my right honourable friend makes an excellent point, which is what we're trying to do here is to correct a problem that is very current. And actually, uh, Mr. Speaker, honourable and right honourable members opposite can actually help with this because this Wednesday uh, there is due to be a strike tomorrow where the ambulance workers, the unions, have not provided a national level of uh, guaranteed uh, safety. Uh, if they could help to correct that. In fact, if we can get this in place across the economy, and particularly in those vital services, then even though we'll take this primary power, we'll never need to use it. And that would be the ideal solution. So why don't they help us? Why don't they help bring safety to their own constituents? And that will help them, and it will help the unions.